I mean, it, you could also not be exercising properly or sleeping well. Hallelujah. That is also biological. And the relation now, it could be that you are a distance away from family, right? And then you feel depressed. You're like, hey, I'm all by myself in this big land of Canada. Just me. I have my family back home. How do I cope? I'm all alone, right? That could be a root cause of depression too, relational. And speaking of relational, you know, it also, it, it could be that a parent is having so much, you know, headache from their children and they happen to be very wild and rebellious, right? And that could actually put them into a place of uh, depression, which is relational. Hallelujah. And vice versa, you know, the kids may be like, hey, you know what? My dad isn't listening to me. He's not providing that listening ear whenever I speak. And that could have that child, you know, go into a dark place of what? Depression. Relational. Another example of a relational um, cause of depression could be that, you know, you're in a relationship and that relationship isn't going so well. It could be a marriage. Um, it could be that, you know, your, your suitor isn't uh, acting right. It could be a divorce in the, in the background about to take place or a separation. And then some people might just find themselves, you know, wandering into a dark place of what? Depression. Hallelujah. Now it could be circumstantial. And what I mean by that, you might have lost someone in your life that you're so close to. You just wish you could have that one time or spend that, spend more time with them. Hallelujah. And that could lead that person into what? Depression. It could be that, you know, you just recently retired, right? And now, you know, you're retired. You happen to expire from the <laughs> things of life, right? You find yourself jobless and you find yourself having no purpose in life hallelujah that could lead to what depression circumstantial and the last point is spiritual you might have depression from real spiritual attacks hallelujah studies show that depression depression lasts two weeks Anything beyond two weeks is considered what? Prayer point. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's what study shows, right? I believe the, the doctors in the house can agree with me with that. Um, so when it comes to the spiritual attack, that's why the Bible will say, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Hallelujah. So it could be a spiritual attack that needs some sort of deliverance. Hallelujah. Deliverance session. Again, the root causes, biological, relational, circumstantial, and spiritual. Now, I will have you turn to your brother or sister on your right and left hand side and say these words after me. Your emotions, your emotion is valid but they're not permanent. Again, you're going to say, your situation may feel hopeless, but with God, there's always hope. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Now, how do we overcome depression? Amen? We're going to look into the book of um, into the book of First Kings, 
chapter 19, verse 3 to 4. Or, you know, just make it 3 to 6, actually. But before we get to that Bible uh, chapter, I would like to talk about Moses. You know, Moses was a powerful leader. Who here knows about Moses? Anyone in the house? He was a powerful leader. He uh, performed so many miracles. And on one holy day, you know, he, he, just, he just gave up. He's like, you know, God, this burden is way too much for me. I cannot carry on. This burden is way too much for me. Hallelujah. And then it says, if this is how you are going to treat me, put me to death. Even Moses himself. Can you imagine that? It's like the burden of leading the Israelites were too much on him that he wanted to give up on his life, give up on the purpose and assignment that God has destined for his life and just, you know, depart from the earth. Hallelujah. You see, one thing I like about Moses is that, um, you know, he didn't put, pull, pull himself away, but instead he surrounded himself with people that could what? Help him. With people that could lift his hand what? Up. Hallelujah. Amen. Now let's go into Elijah this morning. So what I'm trying to say at the end of the day is do not work alone right call a friend hallelujah. hallelujah now let's look into the book first king chapter 19 3 to 6 do you have it ready for me thank you it says and when he saw that he arose and ran from you know what take it from verse 2 so we can have a uh, enough context thank you it says, then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, so let God do to me and more also, if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And then verse uh, three. And when he saw that, he arose and ran for his life. The Bible said what? He ran for his what? life another version would say he was afraid and he fled for his life hallelujah and went to ba Bathsheba right Bathsheba which belongs to Judah and let his servant there so you see in this bible verse he had someone with him but he chose he chose to be alone he dropped off his servant you know, in the little uh, city of uh, Be uh, Besheba, hallelujah, and he chose to go alone. Now verse 4 says, it says, but he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and, and sat down under a brown tree, under a broom tree, and he, and, and he prayed that he might die and said, it is enough now, Lord, take my life, for I am no better than my father's. Hallelujah. You can see how shallow he was. You know, that's how far depression can take you to the point where he saw no point of uh, existing on earth again. He saw no value in himself. It's like he's, in fact, his, his fathers are better than, you know, than him. And I believe that is not the, the prayer point of any parents in the house. The prayer point of every parents in the house is for what? Their children to be what? Greater and better than them. Hallelujah. But in this Bible verse, you could see Elijah clouded by fear, clouded by depression. It's like, Lord, if you can take me today, take me. I don't think I can do better than my fathers. Because of what? Fear. Hallelujah. Not just that, he felt so alone because 
Jezebel has gotten rid of most of the prophet in his time, right? And it was just him, right? But not just that, like, you could imagine a man that called down rain from heaven <laughs> and also called down fire on a bull. I believe back then he knew that God was on his side, but all of a sudden he lost that focus. It's like, I am alone. Please take me today. Please let's go into the next verse. The next verse would be uh, verse 5. It says, Then as he lay and slept under a broom tree, suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. Hallelujah. Arise and eat. Suddenly, while he was sleeping, an angel touched him and said what? Arise and eat. You see, God in his infinite mercy, regardless of his prayer point, he, God even ignored him. He's like, bro, I know your future. He ignored that prayer point and, and, he, and he chose to attend to him. Now, an angel could be a form of a person. It could be a form of a, a friend or a brother, right? Even in your low moments, God could send someone to reach out to you. But the problem with many of us is even when that person reaches out to us, you expect more. Like for example, let's say you've been worrying and you know, you've just been in fear about your job and you're like, God Almighty, I don't know. I don't think I can ever have a, a, a good job, right? And then you just keep, and then that drives you into isolation and you suddenly in, ignore everyone around you. Hallelujah. You don't call out to reach out to friends anymore. It's just you, right? And then <laughs> a friend calls you and say, hey, I'm just checking up on you. Is everything okay? And then in your mind, you're like, now, okay, I go shop. <laughs> In a <the> foreign language. <laughs> I'm here thinking about my job and my life, and you're here calling me to ask me if I'm okay. Is that what I'm going to eat? Hallelujah. Sometimes depression could have you chase away people that God will send into your life to help you. Those angels that God will send into your life to help you, as the Bible scripture says here, it says the angel appeared to him, woke him up and fed him. Sometimes a friend would want to give you encouraging words. That may not be what you expect, but those words could heal you. Hallelujah. Again, don't work alone. Call a friend. Amen. Amen. And the next Bible verse says, verse 6. It says, Then he looked, and, and there by his head was a cake baked on coals and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and lay down again. Hallelujah. You see, this angel was so patient with him. He nurtured him. You know, and the Bible recorded that this angel, you know, in, in, in the place of a person could be nurturing you with encouraging, encouraging words or praying with you, right? It doesn't necessarily have to be food. Amen. I can remember a time, you know, a, a brother of mine was going through a tough time and um, he ended up isolating himself from even his family, right? And I was so opportune to reach out to him at that time of need, right? And there was just something really simple I did. And it meant a lot to him. He just changed his whole perspective. On one fateful weekend, I drove down to Scarborough to see him. And then I just took him out bowling with other friends, right? <laughs> I didn't really have to, you know, speak, you know, the word of God over his life and everything, even though I was doing that behind the scenes. I just said, you know what? How about we just go out? You know, let's just go enjoy ourselves. 
play some bowling with friends. And it was so relaxing, right? And then eventually he opened up. And at the end of the day, the Lord God Almighty healed him. Amen? Amen. So do not forget to call a friend in dark times. And even if <laughs> you don't call a friend, a friend is going to reach out to you. Because God looks after his own. Hallelujah. In this Bible verse, regardless of, uh, you know, Elijah dropping off his servant <laughs> at Bathsheba, you know, he just dropped him off to be alone, to wander in the wild land. <laughs> right? God still ministered to him and sent him an angel. Hallelujah. Somebody that could uplift him. So remember... Don't work alone. Say to someone, don't work alone. Do not work alone. You see, Elijah, who did the wrong way, you know, who did it the wrong way, um, Elijah was afraid. You see, he went alone instead of inviting friends to come along. He went alone. You know, sometimes the devil will try to isolate you in your despair just to destroy you. Hallelujah. When the devil isolates you, he steals away your joy. He steals away your peace. And eventually you start thinking suicidal thoughts. Hallelujah. So again, do not what? Work alone. Now, the second point would be embrace community. Say to your neighbor, embrace community. Embrace community. We're going to look at 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 10 and verse 14. Now, when I, what I mean by embracing community, you know, you need to be intentional in building connections with people around you. Hallelujah. One of the Ten Commandments is love God and love people. Hallelujah. The Bible also says in the book of Genesis, it says, it is not good for a man to what? I can't hear you. It is not good for a man to what? Be alone. So you shouldn't be alone. You should not be alone. You need to embrace a community. Hallelujah. Now, verse 10 of chapter 19 says, So he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they seek to take my life too. Hallelujah. You can, see that, you can see Elijah crying out there. He's saying, Lord, I am alone. There's no friend. There's no brother. It's just me. How can I survive this, Lord? Right? Again, be intentional in building connections with people. Love God first and love people. Embrace what? Community. Under the point embracing community you have to prioritize your family gathering hallelujah you know when the church has a gathering like you know activities during the week bible study you know um, it really doesn't have to be the church it could be your immediate family as well right be intentional about you know being in the midst of them and just just being amongst people hallelujah and as well as your church family. Because even, you know, Jesus was saying to, I believe, his disciples then when his mother and uh, uh, someone came to see him. He pointed out, he's like, hey. Oh, they actually, they pointed out to Jesus. They're like, hey, your mother is here to see you. And then Jesus is like, hey, you know what? These are my families. Those who do the will of God. Hallelujah. Even if you can't reach out to your immediate family, reach out to the church. We are your family. Reach out to the pastor. Reach out to that one friend that you feel is trustworthy enough 
Hallelujah. Amen. Am I communicating to someone? Prioritize your family. Now, the third point, attend a small group. Just recently, uh, the Lord blessed us with a, a cell group. We usually meet every uh, Monday, right? And honestly, I'd like to say that cell group is in a place to just come and show off your revelations. Hallelujah. It's a place to show love. It's a place to practicalize love. I was opportune to join one of the cell group meetings. I believe that was uh, uh, Deji's cell group. Uh, just because uh, my cell group was on vacation that day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I happened to join theirs. And there was something I really noticed that I really found profound. And, you know, even after the whole session, the whole Bible session, you know, they just talked about life and they were just relaxed. You know, it wasn't serious. It wasn't all about, hey, uh, you know. Uh, the, the Bible, Bible, you have to practice the Bible too, right? Even after reading it. You know, they talked about life. They talked about what was going on in their lives. And then I believe somebody on that call contacted somebody that was missing out, right? And the whole group had a chat on a conference call with that person. Isn't that beautiful? That is beautiful. And, and that's what we should do. We should practicalize love. Love God and love what? Your neighbor. If you claim you love yourself and you do not love your neighbor, you do not love God. Hallelujah. You need to reach out to people. Attend a small group and be a part of a cell group. You know, do not skip church. The Bible says the threefold cord is not easily broken. The Bible says where two or three are gathered, his presence is there. Hallelujah. Now, <laughs> I'd like to expose you to something today. You know, when Peter was locked up in prison, what happened? Sorry? The church prayed for Peter. Peter. When they found out that he was locked up in prison, what happened? They prayed for Peter. And what happened? What was, it? What, what was the result of that? An angel, what? Rescued Peter from the prison. <laughs> and Peter was pretty much in disbelief because he, he couldn't believe it. He thought he was in a vision, right? <laughs> he couldn't believe it. That, oh, this is really happening, you know? I'm being rescued by an angel. Literally. So if you do not attend cell groups or if you, don't, if you do not attend the church services or reach out to someone, how, how, how can we, you know, tell what's going on in your life? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The church heard. And that's why the church needs to be alert too. When you see a brother or sister, you know, missing out from these meetings, we need to take up that responsibility and what? Check up on them. Hey, brother, hey, sister, I just want to say hi. I hope all is well with you. That's enough. Hallelujah. Amen? Do you agree with me today in the house? Yes, sir. So the church has a role to play. I also remember a time where my family and, uh, you know, myself, we're going through a very tough time. Um, my brother, uh, which some of you know, uh, he came visiting last year from Nigeria. Um, you know, was just going through a season in his life, a very, very, very down time in his life. Uh, he suffered from, uh, he had like a, a heart situation going on. And it was pretty bad, even to the point that he almost, you know, went into depression as well, right? And then I remember, first of all, before I go any further, do, do anyone know about the inter intercessory prayer group in church? Is anyone that knows about it? 
Yeah? Just pastor and pastor missus. No? Yeah? You see, I reached out to them. I'm like, hey, my brother, I don't know what's going on. It's been chaotic. The doctor is saying A, the doctor is saying B. We're here running from one, <laughs> from one city to another, just looking for doctors. Right? And the church, what? Prayed. As God we have it, you know, they prayed, they continually prayed for my brother. And to the glory of God, today, my brother is stable. Hallelujah. That is what the power of a community does. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So do not single yourself out. Embrace what? Community. Attend a family event, immediate family, a church, or it could be a get-together of a group of friends that turned family. But trustworthy friends that would elevate you and encourage you with words, with truth, and prayer. Hallelujah. And now the third point on the how to overcome depression. Escape to extended fasting. Hallelujah. That's the part no one wants to hear, including myself sometimes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Escape to extended what? Fasting. Let us look at First King chapter 19, 8, 9, and 15 to 20. Yeah. You know, fasting is a spiritual practice often accompanied by prayer and seeking God's guidance in the Bible. When you fast, you add healthy stress, hallelujah, to your life. Because it renews what? Your strength in God. Hallelujah. When you fast, it renews your strength in God. Now, back to the point. Escape to extended fasting. You know, sometimes it's natural for us to, um, you know, when we feel isolated and we're depressed, we tend to escape to other things that would not renew our strength. Sometimes you escape to... to an old habit. Hallelujah. You escape to Netflix and chill. Um, <laughs> someone got it. You know, you escape to gluttoning, like just eating, just keep eating till you eventually die. Hallelujah. Sometimes you escape to social media. You know, you just want to keep scrolling and you just forget your problems. Keeping in mind that <laughs> by the time you're done scrolling, you go back to that problem. <laughs> Hallelujah. Elijah escaped to fasting. Hallelujah. Bring up that Bible verse, please. After fleeing from Jezebel, Elijah traveled 40 days and 40 nights. The Bible says, So he arose and ate and drank, and he went in the strength of the fo sorry, he went in the strength of that food forty days and forty nights, as far as Horeb, the mountain of what? Of God. When you fast, you're crying out for the mountain of God. You're crying out for God's intervention in your life. Hallelujah. That's what happens when you fast. Elijah saw what was going on with him. Even after being fed by the angel, being ministered to, what did he do? He went to the mountains to fast. Hallelujah. He went to connect with God. And in the place of fasting is a place of prayer, is a place of seeking the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. In the place of fasting, the word of the Lord came to him when he was seeking his word. Hallelujah. You see, sometimes when you're in a place of depression, you, you, you tend to lose sight of where God is taking you to. You lose your vision. Amen? Sometimes you need to fast to fasting what God has proposed for your life. 
to fast track you. Hallelujah. And that's what fasting does. Even at that place, the word of the Lord came to him. The Bible says, the word, in the beginning the word was what? And the word was what? And the word was God. Hallelujah. So the word of the Lord came to, 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 to Elijah. And what was that word of the Lord? After he, Elijah complaining, searching the word, the word of the Lord came to him to go and what? Anoint other prophets. Since he's feeling alone, God instructed him to go and what? Anoint other prophets. You see, in the place of fasting, God reveals to you your next step. Hallelujah. You can't do it. You can't do it without fasting. God re re shows you what you need to do next. Another example would be would be Moses. Moses fasted 40 days and 40 nights on Mount Sinai. And the Lord God Almighty gave him what? The Ten Commandments. Hallelujah. In a nutshell, what I'm trying to say today is that when you escape to extended fasting, the Lord God Almighty renews your strength. He renews your vision. Hallelujah. He renews your prayer life. He renews your world life. Hallelujah. He renews your health, even in the process. Amen. If you've been eating a lot, you, you get to lose weight. Amen. <laughs> Just on a light mood, you know, the other day I was, um, so we had evangelism and um, I forgot my, no, I didn't forget my shirt, but I, I grew out of the, the shirt I had. <laughs> and then I went up to uh, to Pastor Mrs. But I didn't, I didn't directly go up to her. I think someone, uh, I met an usher and I'm like, hey, bro, I grew out of my shirt. I need an extra large. Uh, well, I mean, two X large. Because <laughs> I grew out from uh, a large, X large, and approaching to X large. And then I think that alarmed Pastor Mrs. <laughs> She's like, what is going on? <laughs> and then on my way downstairs, even after being given the church shirt by the usher, Pastor Mrs. met me. She's like, we need to declare a hundred days fasting for you. I don't know what is going on. <laughs> Your wife needs to stop feeding you. <laughs> right? And, and it's true. In fact, that is really true. I actually took it personally. I'm like, man. I'm... <laughs> Cause I'm like, man, what's going on, man? Like, if you see the uh, the, the pictures, or if you see the pictures of me last three, four years, oh my god, my wife couldn't take her eyes off me. It's like, yeah, you couldn't take your eyes off me, <laughs> right? I had, you know, some people would call it, you know, six packs. But right now, I have, uh, they call it that board. Or oh, one pack. Thank you, one pack. Or oh, super pack. <laughs> right? But the Lord will help me in Jesus' name. So escape to what? Fasting. Hallelujah. It is the only way to renew your strength. In conclusion, you overcome depression by not working alone. Hallelujah. You overcome depression by embracing community. Hallelujah. You overcome depression by escaping to fasting and not escaping to your old habits. Because eventually, it will lead to your what destruction. 
Amen? Now, here's the thing. The Bible says, come to me all who and a heavenly what? Laden. And I will give you what? Rest. The rest you are looking for is in Christ Jesus. It's not in that uh, it's not in your fears. Hallelujah. It's not in your anxiety. It's not in your stress, in your unhealthy stress. Hallelujah. The rest you need is in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It was fear that blinded Elijah that stared him towards the path of wanting to kill himself. A man that just did mighty miracles. Now, when you think that you are all by yourself, what happens? You begin to magnify your self. Because God is no longer in the picture. You're like, God, stay on side. Let me do this on my own. Right? So, choose to magnify Christ today. Hallelujah. The author and the finisher of your faith. Amen? Amen. That's the only person that can give you rest. The devil will not give you rest. The devil gives you deep rest. Depression. Hallelujah. We're just going to bow our heads this morning. And I'm going to have... Uh, if uh, the youth pastor can permit me, Moyer, I'm just going to ask uh, my daddy and the Lord, Pastor Fuller, to say a prayer of deliverance to those struggling with depression. You know, like I said, the, 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 the last point I gave was sometimes it could be spiritual, right? Anything beyond two weeks is spiritual. You're under attack. And you need the Lord God Almighty to deliver you here. If you're that person, you can step forward. And the man of God will say a prayer over your life. And the Lord God Almighty will deliver you from every depression in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, with eyes closed and head bowed, please, I would need your head bowed. And if there's anyone in the room experiencing depression, I would need you to step forward boldly, ignoring whoever is beside you. None of us are above it. Many great men of God went through it, even presidents. And the Lord God Almighty will deliver you. Watch our services online. Visit rccgredemptionhouse.com and click on Watch. If you have prayer points and testimonies, write us at share at rccgredemptionhouse.com. Please send your suggestions, concerns, or questions to pastor at rccgredemptionhouse.com. And that's it for the announcements. Thank you for listening and enjoy the rest of the service.